Almost everybody these days, of course, is familiar with the internet, this uh, global network that allows computers to connect to each other. Um, that actually came out of a joint research project back in the 60s and 70s between a number of universities, government entities, and corporate entities trying to find a way to hook their computers together, and one thing led to another and to another and to another, and it eventually evolved into this thing we call the internet. Unfortunately, that particular network was really not designed to do the kinds of things that we want to do now. We want to see movies online. We want to download songs. We want to communicate with each other. The original internet in its design and the way it's physically structured is designed really primarily for handing strings of text information back and forth. Um, in the mid-90s, uh, an organization sort of bubbled up from a number of primarily university researchers who were interested in trying to develop the next generation internet that was capable of handling all the types of things that we're currently trying to do on Internet One, if you will, or the commodity internet as it's often referred. Uh, that organization became known as Internet Two, and um, I've been actively involved with the organization since uh, 1999 and been uh, involved in a number of research projects, primarily in the realm of music distance education. Uh, one of the things that has been really quite interesting for, for not only me, but in fact many of the people involved in Internet 2, was how much the demands of the fine arts were on the network capabilities. Uh, when you take a, a scientific process or something, and you need to move this massive amount of information from point A to point B, which is the, the typical use that, that you find a lot of scientists and such using, if it takes a tenth of a second longer to get from here to there, nobody cares. But if you and I are trying to talk to each other, and primarily if we're trying to talk in a musical sense where you can understand the timbre of the sound that I'm making, where you can hear the nuance of the tone quality I'm producing, and we can do that in a live situation, that requires no interruptions. It requires a massive amount of continuous throughput that the commodity internet isn't capable of doing. And what happened was, as Internet 2 started to develop, a lot of the, the, fish, the, the hardware and such that was in it was based on commodity types of, of devices, routers, switchers, things like that. And uh, many of the, the, the companies that made that sort of stuff realized very quickly that their equipment didn't hold up in that kind of environment uh, of the sort of constant streaming of massive amounts of inter information. And so they began redesigning and uh, sort of rebuilding and repurposing some of the devices that they had. And we got to sort of test and, and break and fix and all that sort of stuff. And what's happened now is the things that we've done in Internet 2 have started to find their way back into the commodity Internet. And so companies that are producing those sorts of things, they look at our research and say, ah, we can fix this, we can make this better. Now you can go to iTunes and download a song very quickly or a movie or what have you, uh, stuff that was really not possible even just a, a few years ago. Uh, and most of that has come about as a result of so much of the research that uh, myself and many of my colleagues around the country and, and truly now around the world have been involved in in the Internet 2 community. We have people that are primarily interested in how do the, 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 the little bursts of light actually go through the fiber. So we have people working at that level. We have people that are interested in those devices that those fiber cables connect to. How do they work? We have people interested in writing the software that controls those devices. Uh, my primarily, uh, primary area of interest is in uh, sort of the, the, the top end of the user, of, of people that are actually using and developing protocols and techniques that if I want to teach a, uh, a music lesson or be a part of a concert or something like that, dealing with some of the audio and video issues that give me the highest quality, that uh, I can truly get the sort of immersive experience where I'm not looking at a, you know, a little desktop image on my computer screen, but I'm looking at a life-size, full-blown, high resolution video image. I'm surrounded by the audio and it's as if you and I are sitting there talking but you're in Miami and I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, Internet 2 holds uh, a couple of large sort of general membership meetings each year, generally one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, the spring one just ended. Uh, it's in, it was in Washington DC. Uh, 
And actually, last fall, I won uh, an award from Internet2, uh, what they call their IDEA Award. It was the inaugural IDEA Award for the research that I've done in, in music education. Um, but it's um, in addition to the large sort of member meetings, there are a number of workshops that, that are held around the country at all times of the year. I typically, for instance, go teach a workshop every January. Uh, for people that are interested in pursuing the music angle of, of Internet 2 capabilities. And I, I spend a week, about three, four days down in, uh, I know it's terrible, I have to go to Miami every year to, to teach uh, down at the, uh, the Internet 2 workshop that they hold with the New World Symphony down in Miami. And it's just uh, one of the many things that we do.